German pressure gauge that I found at a hydraulic uh, store. They sell sprinkler pipes actually and they, they measure pressure up to 100 psi. The inner, the inner scale is in bar pressure, bar pressure being the German equivalent of one atmosphere and each atmosphere changes like. You can see there's a bubble in there. This is a liquid filled gauge, a very nice gauge. It's German, it's very accurate. And I've made an adapter onto this so that I can plug it into the fuel pressure line and test the, the running pressures. This is the, the gauge which cost me $200. And this one's available from, from Ossenmacher Tool if you've got $200 you don't know what to do with. This one has a T in it. It's really very simple to, to get into the system is to loosen this hose clamp here after having depressurized the system. There's several ways of doing that. Remove this line and it will attach to this end and then this end will simply replace here. And it just tees this gauge into the pressure side. And this is the high pressure side. This is the low pressure side. This side of the line, if you ever pull it off even when the car is running, there will be so little fuel coming out of here. It will just astound you that the, you can go from 50, 60 working pounds of pressure down to 36 pounds and there's just nothing seems to be coming out of here. It is correctly functioning, even if you see very little fuel pressure coming out of this line, even when it's running. These gauges here, uh, as, it doesn't really matter what they are as long as they read out in bar pressure because all the questions that you run into, most of the um, specifications are rated in bar. I believe that Nissan does translate them over into pounds per square inch for those of you who only have a gauge that has PSI on it instead of bar. One thing I want to note to you here that's scary to me beyond my wildest dreams. These two fuel lines look identical and time and time again we see these cars coming in with low pressure fuel line. High pressure fuel line is rated up to 150 to 200 pounds per square inch. The low pressure fuel line like you see on all your carbureted cars has a maximum working pressure of 36 psi. The only way you can tell, and I do believe this will have a piece, this piece here will have it written on, no it does not. If it does not say MPI fuel line, multi-point injection fuel line, don't use it for your Z car. If it doesn't say fuel injection hose or something to that effect, it is not fuel injection hose, it is not fuel injected rated. I can show you two pieces side by side and they're identical and the mistake is easily made. And the problem starts because the person walks in and asks for a piece of 516's fuel line. If they don't remind the person selling the fuel line that it needs to be high pressure, chances are they'll walk out thinking that they've got high pressure line when they do not. The Society of American Engineers has a rating system and it's usually printed on most of the, of the hose somewhere and if it's get a long section of it, eventually it will say SAE and it will be 30 R-7 is low pressure. 30-R9 is high pressure. So it would be easy to say, geez, 30R something? Oh, that's it. No. The only difference between high and low pressure as far as SAE engineers are concerned is that two, the, no, the difference between a 7 and a 9 printed on the side of it. A 9, 30R9, 30R9 is high pressure. The higher the number, the higher the pressure. 30R7 is low pressure, 36 PSI. If you see underneath your hood right now, go to your car, open up the hood. If you've got a piece of 30R7, do one of two things. Replace it or buy a darn good insurance policy because you're going to have a fire. Next thing, when these pieces of, of fuel line are being replaced, every last one of these lines, from the cold start injector to its loop rail over to the main loop rail, each connector on your early cars. Now we're looking at a 75 through 76 type loop rail. It's a multi-piece loop rail and it has several more small connectors in it. Nissan eliminated these hoses in the 77, 78 years and made a much, a much nicer system out of it in my estimation. It's not as difficult to work with but if you have the early system stay with it uh, for a lot of reasons. It fits a little differently, your manifold is shaped differently. You have, to you have to retain this style with this manifold. The two will go together. Taking a good look at the way the system functions in an overall. For those of you who are taking notes, and I bet you thought I forgot this part. I didn't. This is the part I hate the worst because you're going to have to remember this. Most of your books will tell you, both in bar and in fuel pressure, PSI, the working pressure of this at idle with the vacuum line hooked up should be 36 PSI or approximately 2.5 to 2.6 bar. And I, it's awfully tough to see in this picture, but 2.6 bar equ equates to that. Now don't get too 
caught up in the fact that you're missing a couple pounds of pressure. It's very typical for the gauges to be inaccurate. If you've got anything over 2.2 to 3 bar of pressure, the system will function. Albeit, it will function better and you'll have better and more crisp throttle response if you could take and increase the pressure. Uh, there are a few adjustable fuel pressure regulators that can give you more fuel delivery per uh, injector pulse simply because the law of physics states that the higher the pressure, the greater amount of fuel will pass through a given orifice in a given time. So you can improve that if you're getting some of the drivability problems, and we'll try and deal with some of those before we get all said and done with this. Again, 36 psi, 2.5, 2.6 bar. That's with this hooked up, the engine's running. This assumes that your car's running, obviously. <laughs>